The story of Ishmael, Abraham's first son, is one of deep spiritual significance and personal struggle, unfolding within the larger context of God's covenant with Abraham. It's a tale that illustrates human imperfection, divine promises, and the complexities of family dynamics, while offering a rich reflection on God's grace and faithfulness. Ishmael was born to Abraham when he was 86 years old. At this time, Abraham was living near Hebron, and he had no children, despite God's promise that he would become the father of many nations, Genesis 15. God's promise seemed distant and unlikely, as Abraham's wife, Sarah, was barren and advanced in age. This divine promise sets the stage for a series of decisions that would change the course of Abraham's family and shape the history of nations. The Apparition and God's Promise to Abraham In Genesis 15, God appears to Abraham in a vision, promising him not only a son, but also that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. This promise was extraordinary, given the circumstances. Abraham was already old, and Sarah had been unable to conceive throughout their long marriage. Their questions and doubts about how God would fulfill His word reflect a very human response to divine promises that seem impossible from a worldly perspective. The passage is a testament to faith and patience. Abraham trusted in God's words, but the means by which this promise would come to pass remained unclear. As months and years passed without Sarah becoming pregnant, their faith was tested further leading Sarah to take matters into her own hands. Sarah's decision and the birth of Ishmael. In Genesis 16, Sarah, then called Sarai, proposes a solution to the problem of her barrenness. In an act that mirrors cultural practices of the time, she offers her Egyptian maidservant Hagar to Abraham as a secondary wife. In this way, Sarah hoped to fulfill God's promise by having a child through Hagar. This act of surrogacy was a common practice in antiquity, allowing a barren woman to claim the offspring of her maid as her own. This decision, while culturally acceptable, led to a cascade of conflicts. Hagar did indeed conceive, and her pregnancy immediately caused tension between her and Sarah. As Hagar's status rose because of her pregnancy, she began to despise Sarah, viewing her as inferior due to her barrenness. This shift in dynamics caused great pain for Sarah, who, in her frustration, blamed Abraham for the situation. In Genesis 16:5, Sarah says to Abraham, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant into your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. Abraham, caught between the two women, allows Sarah to deal with Hagar as she sees fit. Sarah's treatment of Hagar becomes harsh, and in response, Hagar flees into the desert, escaping the hostility of her mistress. The angel of the Lord appears to Hagar. In her time of distress, Hagar encounters an angel of the Lord in the wilderness. This divine encounter is significant as it reveals God's concern not only for the chosen people of his covenant, but also for those on the margins. The angel comforts Hagar and instructs her to return to Sarah, assuring her that the son she will bear will be named Ishmael, meaning God hears, for the Lord had heard her affliction. The angel further promises that Ishmael will be the father of a great nation, though he will live in conflict with others, Genesis 16, 12. This prophecy would prove to be true, as Ishmael's descendants would become numerous and influential, though often embroiled in strife. Hagar returns to Abraham's household and gives birth to Ishmael. Though the child is technically Sarah's by custom, the relational dynamics remain strained. For the next several years, Ishmael grows up in Abraham's household, cherished by his father, but caught in the tension between his mother and Sarah. The Covenant and the Birth of Isaac Years later, when Abraham is 99 years old, God reaffirms his covenant with him, promising once again that Sarah, now called Sarah, will bear a son. This son, Isaac, is the child of the promise through whom God's covenant will be fulfilled. Despite the birth of Ishmael, Abraham remains confused about why another son is necessary. He pleads with God in Genesis 17, 18, saying, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. But God insists that Isaac is the son through whom the covenant will be established. God commands Abraham to circumcise all the males in his household, including Ishmael, as a sign of this covenant. Abraham obeys, circumcising Ishmael at the age of 13. 
This act not only marks Ishmael as part of Abraham's household, but also symbolizes God's ongoing blessing upon him, even though he is not the child of the promise. The Conflict Between Isaac and Ishmael The birth of Isaac, Sarah's long-awaited son, escalates the tension between Sarah and Hagar. The Bible tells us that when Isaac was weaned, Sarah observed Ishmael mocking, or scoffing, at Isaac, Genesis 21.9. While the exact nature of Ishmael's behavior is unclear, it was enough to provoke Sarah to demand that Hagar and Ishmael be sent away. She saw Ishmael as a threat to Isaac's inheritance and his place in the family. Abraham is deeply distressed by this request as he loves Ishmael and does not wish to send him away. However, God instructs Abraham to listen to Sarah, reassuring him that while Isaac is the child of the promise, Ishmael will also become a great nation because he is Abraham's son. Hagar and Ishmael in the Wilderness Reluctantly, Abraham sends Hagar and Ishmael into the wilderness with only a small supply of bread and water. When their provisions run out, Hagar despairs, believing that they will die. She places Ishmael under a bush and moves away, unable to watch him suffer. But once again, God intervenes. An angel calls out to Hagar, telling her not to be afraid, for God has heard Ishmael's cries. The angel shows her a well of water, and Hagar and Ishmael are saved. God reiterates his promise to Hagar, assuring her that Ishmael will become the father of a great nation. Ishmael grows up in the wilderness, becoming an expert archer. He eventually marries an Egyptian woman, and his descendants multiply, forming the tribes known as the Ishmaelites. The Legacy of Ishmael The Bible later details the descendants of Ishmael in Genesis 25, 12 through 18. He had 12 sons, who became the leaders of 12 tribes. These tribes settled in the region stretching from Havilah to Shur, near Egypt. Ishmael's descendants are associated with the nomadic tribes of the Arabian Peninsula, and they play a significant role in the history of the region. Ishmael's story doesn't end with his exile into the wilderness. Though he was not the child of the covenant, God's promise to make him a great nation was fulfilled. His descendants, known as Ishmaelites, became influential in the ancient world. The Bible records that Ishmael lived to be 137 years old and was buried alongside his father, Abraham, in the cave of Machpelah. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul references Ishmael in his letter to the Galatians. Paul uses the story of Hagar and Ishmael to draw a spiritual allegory about the difference between the Old Covenant, represented by Hagar, and the New Covenant, represented by Sarah. Ishmael, the son of the slave woman, symbolizes the Old Covenant based on the law, while Isaac, the son of the free woman, represents the New Covenant based on grace, Galatians 4, 21-31. The Significance of Ishmael Today, Ishmael's story resonates not only in biblical history, but also in the broader religious and cultural context. In Islamic tradition, Ishmael is revered as an ancestor of the Arab peoples, and Muslims believe that he played a key role in the construction of the Kaaba in Mecca alongside his father, Abraham. While Ishmael's descendants are often associated with conflict, his story is also one of divine blessing and provision. God did not abandon Ishmael, even though he was not the chosen son of the covenant. Instead, God protected him, provided for him, and made him the father of a great nation, showing that his promises extend beyond the limits of human understanding. Conclusion A Story of Faith, Conflict, and Divine Grace The story of Ishmael is a rich tapestry of faith, conflict, and divine grace. It reminds us that God's plans often surpass human expectations and that His blessings extend even to those who seem to be outside the central narrative. Ishmael, though not the child of the covenant, was still a recipient of God's promises and favor. As we reflect on Ishmael's journey, we are reminded of the complexities of family relationships, the struggles of faith, and the enduring nature of God's grace. His story serves as a reminder that God hears the cries of all people, even those on the margins, and that His plans for humanity are far greater than we can imagine. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through history and the Bible, don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating stories and insights.